It's the most wonderful time of the year, and you can get this water-powered t-shirt from AfterHourCinema.com. Reasonable, I would think. But anyway, um, before I delve into the whole Black Sunday deal, i got to share some fucking nonsense here. Um, Vinegar Syndrome had this sale... Uh, they, they, they changed, they got a separate site, it's called Mucinex or Mucilin or some shit like that because they're trying to hide the fact that they sell X-rated movies because dealing with major studios, major studios don't want X-rated movies in the catalog with their stuff. So now they, they made this whole big fucking deal or whatever and they were going to supposedly blow the shit out for dirt, which they didn't. But I, I made a few purchases for the, the archives, of course. So, I get a follow-up. The day I get the order, I think there was maybe seven DVDs, eight DVDs, whatever in the thing. How do you like your order? Well, I typed in, I said, well, it just came here. I haven't even had it in my hands for an hour, and I can let you know later because I'm headed out to the supermarket to buy a gallon of baby oil and a case of paper towels. Okay, I'm being fucking funny. I get another one. How did you like a specific DVD? Well, I actually watched that one, so I said, well, you know something, Matt and the Idol was pretty good. I think I rubbed one out three or four times while watching that. You want a review? I'm giving you a review. So, for whatever reason, I guess that was it. I was deleted off their fucking mailing list, as I was deleted off a couple other companies' mailing lists, because I outspeak. Um... Right now, Severin's going to put out Dr. Butcher MD again, a.k.a. Zombie Apocalypse in a 4K scan. And they're still using that stupid thing, the film that caused riots on 42nd Street. That film did not cause any riots on 42nd Street. The whole deal was Terry Levine had released Make Them Die Slowly. It ran 10 weeks at the Liberty, and he wanted to top it. So he took Zombie Apocalypse, retitled it, used the... Uh, uh, title sequence from an unfinished Roy Frumpke's film, and then you had Dr. Butcher, M.D. It's not a bad movie. It just stopped the fucking stupidity. I, 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 you know, this is what pisses me off. You get this stupid shit from people who never ever set foot on 42nd Street back in the day. No movie caused a riot on 42nd Street. And if there was one, the hands-down one would have been good, Goodbye Uncle Tom. So, that was that. So, anyway... I revisited Black Sunday. Black Sunday was released by American International Pictures in 1960 and paired with Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, it seems that Sam Arkoff picked this one up on a, on a little tour of Europe along with a couple other films. Uh, I think he paid like 100 k for it, which was more than the film cost to do. This was Mario Bava's first feature film, but actually it wasn't because Ricardo Frida gave him the directorial reins of Caltiki the Immortal Monster. I think that was 59. And you could see all the touches that were going to happen with, you know, Bava's background as a cinematographer and stuff like that. Uh, Black Sunday's real title was Mask of Satan, and for whatever reason, AIP changed it to Black Sunday. I'm sure the influence that the church still had on moviegoers back then came into play because Satan on a marquee would have pissed a lot of people off of the faithful. So anyway, this was Barbara Steele's debut, which pretty much cemented her in Italian horror. And it's about a witch that was executed and comes back to life. Most people have seen this thing. And um, the odd thing is, uh, the Blu-ray is the American theatrical cut, which runs 83 minutes, and the Anchor Bay box set cut runs 87 minutes. Now, people might say, what does four minutes taken out mean? Well, actually, in this case, it means a lot, because I think some of the gore scenes were definitely snipped. Uh, the only one I can think that comes to mind is the exposed rib cage when it winds up that, you know, the twins and Barbara Steele and whatever. Uh, a couple other little gory sequences. But <clears throat> I remember seeing this... In the newspaper ad in 1960, I was, I guess, eight years old, and of course I was fascinated by this shit by then. And of course, this was something you're never going to get to see. And oddly enough, where a whole bunch of other black and white films were getting booked for kitty matinees, this one slipped through the cracks. And when VHS came out, this was one of the most highly sought bootleg titles of all times. I think something weird might have been the original one to put out a, a, a print of it on VHS, and, of course, what happened back then is, you know, one company puts it out, within three weeks every other bootleg company has it out. 
Um, it is a good film. It's a groundbreaking film, and it showcases the talents of Mario Bava in his early days and how he progressed and how Mario Bava could actually make a Hercules movie watchable with his directorial skills. So that's one I said I would check out, and I did, and it still holds up today. It's still creepy. It's, it, it's one, probably one of the most beautifully filmed Italian horror films going back to the 60s. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, Bava got his, you know, shot from Ricardo Frida, who had done a bunch of other stuff before then, and would go on to do other things like Black Sabbath, Planet of the Vampires, and a whole slew of other great, great films. So that's my take on uh, Black Sunday. Next, we're going to tackle Spider Baby, so stay tuned for that. So until next time, stay sick, and we'll catch you on the flip side.